What's going on, guys? We're here today. We're going to bring you a podcast. It's going to be really insightful. We're going to talk about the dangers of post-show binge eating, just basically changing the narrative because what happens is post-show, we, we're, we're kind of fed a narrative that we, we feel like we have to follow because everyone's talking about it. These companies selling you sweets. Everyone's trying to be like, oh, what are you eating after the show? Wait. And that's the narrative. The narrative is very, very food focused. And we want to kind of remove that narrative and say, why do we feel like we have to eat this bad food? Because we we generally do feel like we have to eat it. Like it's a it's a it's something that we're, that's forced on us. Mm. Whereas we should be doing stuff proper, eating our normal nutritious meals. I mean, our bodies are used to it at that point. Our taste buds are absolutely loving the food. Maybe just have a little bit more of it, but we'll get into all of that. First up, let's just talk about you, Sam. Who are you? Who am I? <laughs> well, are you? Um, Sam Astor, I've been, um, been doing this like bodybuilding for probably five years now. i um, been training for like 10 years. So, you know, I've been doing it a, a fair while now, like, uh, I'm not exactly a beginner, but, you know, I'm not, like, super advanced. Um, like I say, I probably the last two years for me have been, like, the real, like, competitive years. You know, obviously had a really good season last year. It was, like, inches away from getting the pro card. This year didn't didn't go my way as much. But, um, you know, we this is what I love about bodybuilding. We're always learning. You know, you're always getting new perspective on things. And, again, this is why me and Dudley connect so well because we, we always kind of, like, I feel like we're on the same wavelength with that, like, there's always more to learn, you know, you can always improve your mindset and adapt and, you know, learn new things. So yeah, that's, that's a bit about me. I, I don't like talking about myself too much, but. <laughs> recently, cause you competed, we competed against each other recently. Yeah, so man. Sam beat me in a regional four weeks ago. Um, and then I went off to Spain and did, um, I did the amateur Olympia. I'm not forgetting that. I did the that looked, Olympia. That looked mad, bro. That looks, it, that looked crazy. I would say anyone in that top 10 could probably go anywhere else. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. That top 10, like when you're looking at it, you, you, I wasn't looking at it and I was looking at it and being like, this looks like a pro show. Yeah. Like, yeah. In terms of like the standard, like a yeah, low level yeah. pro show, not like a high level pro show, but it looks like a pro show. Yeah, man, that's when you go to those international shows, like, you know, like a good international, the top five is always solid. But when you go to a show like that, the top 10 is like you say, it's just the the, the, the talent is crazy, man. The, the standard is ridiculous. I don't think people understand unless you go and do it. That's when you see you're like, yeah, these guys could all go pro, you know, like yeah. you say, the top 10 could all go pro. Everyone in that yeah. top 10. So I was, I actually figured out I wasn't even in the top 10. I came 11th. Right. Oh man, just outside. Set that yeah. in it. Yeah, that's <laughs> I found it on the website. I was looking through. I thought because the the posted ten pictures on Instagram. Yeah. So I was like, oh well, that must be the top ten. Yeah, I knew yeah. I was just outside the first call out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought maybe there was what maybe I was in the center of the first call out, center of the yeah, second so call out. So it's like I thought maybe yeah. I was somewhere in that top ten. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Maybe even nine or tenth. But yeah, but then I looked on the on the website and it said eleventh. Yeah, that's. Okay. Just outside, man. That's still a really good. Well, Forty guys there. Forty guys. Right, that's it, man. That's right. like that's still a good showing, man. That's. So it was all right. How was how was Poland? Yeah, Poland, man. Poland obviously didn't go my way. You know, I, I the the class was only like seven guys. There's only seven guys in the class. Um, and I and I, I looked as well on NPC and I, I got six. So I didn't come dead last, but <laughs> you know, it's out of the top five. But I mean, it was it was weird because it was like when I came out, uh, they put me right at the end. Um, and I came out and I was like right at the end and the judges were all just looking in the middle they didn't even look at me they didn't even give me a look man so I was like okay this is you know I've never had this before um, and obviously I'm not going to say like oh it was all politics and oh it was all that because you know I know I know ultimately I didn't bring my best but at the same time I know that I could have been some of those guys yeah. like there was one guy that I beat last year at the Arnold's um, and I think I think he got fourth at that show and he looked, I'm not going to degrade people or anything like that, but he looked the same as he did at the Arnold's yeah. and he beat me. And I beat him by quite a lot of placings at the Arnold's. So I don't know, bro, it's, it's weird. And the top five are all Polish and it's like, uh, you it's, know. Yeah. It's, it's body building in it. We were just... We that's just, it, bro. But so, you know, you know, like at the time, like I was really disheartened, you know, because I was like, you know, I, want, I wanted to win this. Yeah. Um, but you 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 got to think about it and you just got to take it on the chin and move on. Like you can't allow yourself to just you know, sit in self-pity, can you? You know, you just got to think, well, what can I do to be better, you know? Yeah, that's it. And that, and that kind of leads us on to what we want to talk about next and what can I do to be better? Yeah. 
reversing out of a show, right? <laughs> exactly, bro. Literally, for the conversation. Like, Dudley, like, like your first thought as soon as you step off stage, right? What's next? That was my first thought. I was like, I'm ready to get on stage again next year, but yeah. like, what's what's next? What, exactly, bro. <laughs> bro, this is this is exactly like you say that the reason why we made this podcast because, like I said, I, I was I was watching your stories and I saw how you you were approaching things and I thought, you know what, man, that is refreshing. That's refreshing to see because, like you said, though you you want to improve for next year, so you going to eat cookies and ice creams and sugar right off the bat you're just delaying your progress for next year you know yeah. you're yeah. delaying your progress for next year you if you truly focus on progress and get better for the next year you're thinking straight out of the gate what can i do to you know start improving you know and yeah yeah, that's yeah. Exactly what, that like, was the thing and i was like i just don't want to eat lots of rubbish because i've been through it i've been there done that i've done it yeah I've been yeah when how long have you been competing for since 2017 about that yeah so, yeah 17 did 18. you always start in classic no, I, well, I was a junior, um, and then obviously I moved. I did a, I did like two open shows, and then I, then I moved to classic. So yeah, I was a junior man, and uh, those junior days post show were just yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> younger, isn't it? You're just smashing everything. Just, yeah, know? man, this is ridiculous. And my first ever, my first ever post show meal. Oh, I did the British Championships in 2017. Yes. Yeah. There was like back in them days, it was men's physique. There was about 30, 40 guys on stage. Yeah. yeah. Placed third there. Um, Isaac Francis placed second, and Ross Allen placed first. Was, that yeah. was 2017 UK BFF. Third, and then I think that, yeah, was the last, that was the last UK BFF year. And then it, it all went to two bros. Yeah, um, man. To be fair, it was good to be involved in that pre. Yeah, I feel like once it's gone to like two bros and stuff, bodybuilding's just accelerated. Up. But like yeah, massively back in like UK BFF days, that was like that was like the old school. That was like real like a niche Corey. thing, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. That Corey was like turned into like yeah. something that all these kids wanted to jump on stage, yeah. and boom, all these bikini exactly. girls to jump in and, and like yeah. be bikini girls just after going to the gym yeah. for two minutes. Same with mental. Yeah, people. man. Literally, it was a different time, man. And it's like you did it because you loved it, didn't you? You know, you did it for the love yeah. of it. Yeah, Rather and than, I like, went and I got a KFC and I got a McDonald's and <laughs> then there's this place in Nottingham called Donuts. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they used to do. They used to make bank because yeah. that British Championships was in Nottingham every single year at the at the town yeah. hall. And they used to make bank. They they would sell out. The queue would be outside the door. They'd sell out. Wow. They'd like they'd make a bunch of cook, a bunch of donuts like a week before, and they'd fully sell out by a couple of days before the show. And you had to like pre-order your donuts. Like wow, it, it was crazy. Yeah, um, yeah, on it. I had a full box of like twelve donuts, and <laughs> I I smashed it. That was my first ever one. Um, and then it it kind of got worse and worse. I remember one yeah. time. I was just eating so much stuff in the car on the way back home and we had to stop at the service station because I had to literally roll my seat all the way back so I could lay flat because I couldn't sit up straight yeah, yeah, I was just going to throw up. So then we, yeah. we stopped at a service station and I had to lay on the floor just like at the service <laughs> station. So I was there just on the side of the car just like, oh, because <laughs> <laughs> I just smashed too much. Literally, that was immediately post show as well on the way back. Yeah, that's it, man. It, you, what, you, what it does happen, doesn't it? Since you had, bro, I, I probably, probably the you know what the worst one I probably had. Well, I probably had. I've had like two instances, right? The first time I did a show, um, <laughs> I did it. It was. Do you, do you remember IBFA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did. I did that. I did that IBFA their British finals, and I think I got. I got third. Um, and I went, I went back home, man. Well, on the way back home, like got a McDonald's because that's like the standard thing you do. <laughs> got a McDonald's. I think I had like all these like Reese's chocolates, like on the way in the car. I got back, man, and I had a, I had a stash of like treats, like in my room. It was like a box full of like Oreos and sweets and like chocolate. And mate, I smashed the whole box, and I was just lying down there, just like you said, just lying there, like. <laughs> what have I done, I had man? To go in the bath. I've had a, one time where I had to go. Yeah, in the bath. Like, a couple of times I've had to lay in the bath because water is the only thing that can. Mate, make yeah, 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 <laughs> literally, bro. But then the worst one I've had is I competed in Mexico. There was this, there's a federation called WABA. I don't know if they're actually still about anymore. Yeah, but I did. Yeah, I did their Mister Universe. It was a sick show. It was in Mexico, so it was wicked. Um, but after the show, there was like three days. We stayed in Mexico after the show, so it was like a holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah mate. Holiday. The worst thing, honestly. Bro, 
there was a uh, all you can eat like um uh you know breakfast in the hotel on the next day and bro i just kept eating and eating and eating i was smashing like little boxes of cereal like 10 boxes of cereal like bro the all the pastries oh my god it was like a it was like a free-for-all honestly yeah. um but you know like on the way back to, to england because i would gained yeah. so much weight my ankles swelled like five, six times the size when I got back to England. And they look like fat man calves. Do you know, like, yeah, yeah, do you yeah, know, yeah. like the water retention, edema, bro, yeah. it was dangerous. It was, it was at that point, it's actually dangerous because it was, yeah. it was swollen. It was inflamed. Do you know when you like, you get an indent in your sock, like, because you gained yeah, a bit of yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, this, this wasn't an indent. This was like full on swell, well, swelling, bro. Honestly, right. I was, yeah. 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 I was probably this close to getting like edema and having, you know, problems. Like, yeah, that's but that's that's the dangers of it, innit? And like, but that one thing that I want to say is one of the most important things per show is getting yourself back into your own environment as soon as yeah. possible. Yeah, hundred percent. No, no all inclusive holiday. Don't go nowhere. Like, just try no. and get yourself back. So, yeah. if we want to talk about recent events, so what I've done from this show is in Spain, I. I came home the next day, I think. Yeah, I competed on Sunday and I was back in my own house Monday morning. My flight was at 6 a.m. So yeah. did the competition. I didn't even have nowhere to stay. So when I went to Spain, I just I just kind of went and I was <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'll figure it out. Um because yeah. I was like I, I needed all my days before so I could prep my food. So I needed to kind of yeah. know what I'm doing. But as soon as the show was done, I was like, Well, my flight's at six o'clock in the morning. I don't want to pay hundred quid for a hotel room. So, because I'm going to have to be at the airport for 4 a.m. So, yes. like, what? And the show, and, like, by the time we ate and everything, it was midnight anyway. So, okay. anyway, I do the show. I chill out for a bit, a little bit. Catch a I hitchhike it into town. Just some random guys. Like, I, have, <laughs> I had no plan at this point. I had no plan. Uh, so, I was I was just speaking to people. I didn't have a clue how to get a taxi. Started speaking to some random guys. I was like, yo, can you take me into Cent Center Al Al Alicante to this hostel? Um, Because I just found this hostel on my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 20 quid for the night. Oh, that's, yeah, that's... I could get a shower. I could have a little bit of a nap, charge my stuff. Yeah, man. It was a locker for my for everything. So oh, yeah. these random guys dropped me into town, um, dropped me to this hostel. And then I went, had a shower, and then we went and met like um Callum, you know, pro coach guys and all yeah. that stuff yeah. like that. Had a pizza by the time that was finished, it was midnight, and I'm like, right, I got four hours now. I need to get back to the airport. Um, so that was talking about poor show eating that was all yeah. I had yeah. Pizza. yeah I just had that one pizza that, one. that whole time between me getting into town I didn't just start snacking on random no, stuff no, no. I think I had some cherries there was a girl that had some cherries and she didn't she didn't want them so I was like yo I'll, I'll. yeah that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, fruit, <laughs> fruit's nice, yeah fruit's nice man poor so I took the cherries and that's that's all I had and I just saved myself I had the pizza um, I just had one pizza and then that was that. And then I found an ice cream place, which was open at midnight. Um, yeah. It was absolutely packed out as well. Quite a few bodybuilders in there as well, poor show. <laughs> just got a nice little ice cream and that was it. And then I was I went back to the hostel, had about a couple of hours of nap and then straight yeah, to the right. airport. Yeah, no right. stupid duty-free stuff. Because no. you think, yeah, big bags of Maltesers, big <laughs> bags like everything's just bigger. So yeah, man. Like that you're finished because I know as soon as I'm on the airplane, I I'm just, you just mindlessly yeah. snacking through it for no reason. Exactly, exactly. So I, I did get some grapes actually. I got some grapes because I knew I wanted. I'd probably want to snack a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But again, just like the cherries. This is the thing that does. It's like making those decisions, making those like informed decisions because you you know yourself. If you would have got that bag of sweets, Maltesers, you would have just finished the whole bag. But yeah. if you don't get it in the first place, it's not there to even have the temptation. So it's just little things like that, isn't it? Just adapting your mindset to say, you know, I'm not going to do this. But no, man, that's um, so that that when I was following you, because you, obviously you're putting that on your stories, man. And I was watching that and I was like, you know what? Like he, he's got he's, he's doing it. He's doing it the right way. Like he's he's had, you know, you've had something. You've had a pizza or whatever. You had a bit of ice cream. That's fine. It's like not to demonize enjoying yourself. But there's that limit, isn't there? It's like when you go overboard. That's when the problems start to happen. And then it's just uncontrollable. You know, it's just so, I mean, that's back to what I said right at the start of that before I started waffling on about everything in Spain, being back in your own environment as soon yeah. as possible. So by 8 a.m. the next morning, I was back on my desk. Yeah, man. What is my reason now not to make bagel and eggs as my first meal? Yeah. Exactly. What's the exactly. reason? 
Exactly. Why am I going to have an Easter egg for breakfast or something? Like that? <laughs> You'll probably see the Easter egg. They've got a couple of Easter eggs still up there. Bearing in mind, what's the month now? It's June. <laughs> yeah. Two Easter eggs. <laughs> I'm just sitting up there. I'm not touching them yet. And I got a freezer full of cookies and stuff like that because people were making me stuff. And yeah, and yeah, yeah. I think that's another thing as well. Like we were talking about the expectation to eat. Yeah. Yeah. People are making you stuff. People are buying you stuff. People yeah. are yeah. asking what your post show meals are going to be and and kind of hyping you up for this event. The yeah. All oh. leading up there. And then once yeah. you get there, then you, yeah. you obviously. It's like, oh, I can't, I can't, oh, what are you going to eat post-show? I bet you can't wait to eat a pizza. I bet you can't wait to eat a burger. It's like, there's that set expectation for you straight off the bat. But like you say, that it's like, that is is actually quite confusing to think of because it's like, well, you should be really getting back into what you were doing in prep, but obviously with more food, you know, just eating the same what you were, but more, you know, like you don't have to go into this, you know, eating crap, straight away like oh i've got i've got to eat this you know now now prep's finished you know i can eat whatever i want it i think we there should be some shift in mentality there definitely you know um, yeah that's what i it, said about just changing the narrative more. yeah like the main narrative should be what exactly what we've done just little bits of there little bit of this little mm-hmm. bit of that um enjoy, enjoy yourself but just don't yeah. be ahead with it whereas the the current narrative is enjoy yourself it's okay to fucking it's, eat not like be a normal person <laughs> i don't want to be a normal person if i want yeah. to be a normal person yeah i won't be a fucking bodybuilder yeah, yeah. I, I want to be a bodybuilder because i'm a bodybuilder i don't want exactly. to be no, you don't. if i wanted to be a normal person i'd go and do that exactly, so, like, why, do exactly. We, why do we have to be a normal person for a few yeah. days? i don't want to be it a normal does, person for a few days it doesn't no, bro. It, it doesn't act, it doesn't actually make sense when you sit down and think about it as well you've been You've been dieting for all this time. You've been so strict. You've been so regimented. And you're just going to throw that out the window because it's normal to do so and normal to, you know, to eat like that post-show. So you've not had you've not had cookies or any of this artificial sugar, sugar processed rubbish. I'm not going to swear. Uh, processed rubbish. But, like, you know, you're going to go and ruin your, your taste buds have become acclimatized to this sort of food. And, it, you know, like a cherry tomato tastes beautiful, you know. Yeah. But then you're going to go and ruin that for three days of eating cookies and you're going to want, you're going to be try to go back to your diet. You're not going to want to eat that food anymore because it's t- going to taste bland. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like people destroy their taste buds. Whereas like, if you m- can maintain that just for a week or two, stay, stay on track, you're going to not want any of that sugary food. Do you know what I mean? But I'm sure you're the same now, Dudley, like the, the thought of like a cookie or a chocolate, it doesn't appease you now. You know, it doesn't really appease you. Like for me, I, I don't care about eating that now. You know, I'm like nearly two weeks post show. I'm just yeah. happy eating the foods that I've got on my plan, you know, and fruit. Um, yeah, it's, if you can get over that initial, you know, surge of wanting to have these foods and that initial like post-show, you know, madness, I feel like you can control it down the line way easier, you know. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it, I've got no food focus at all uh, no. at the moment. Like, I, but even immediately after that, um, the Alicante show, I had no food focus because I was running pretty high food. I was running 800 carbs almost every other day. Yeah. So yeah, that pretty much eliminated it. So I think we, you can also minimize your food focus by being ready early. Of co- yeah, bro. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. Like See, I was ready for that regional show, did that regional show. And then from there, it was two weeks of 800 grams of carbs every, like every other day. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. by the time I got to post that Alicante show, I was like, fuck, man, I, I don't, don't, want, don't want any food. Bro, but you know, grams of carbs. <laughs> for the last two weeks, I'm not that asked about you. That's, that's studly. See, that again, this is going, this is like, you, you, you're looking at a whole scale of things now. It's not just like eating post show. It's like, say, if you've been managed well pre show, you don't really want to eat, eat that like say bro this is the difference with me is that i had to run myself down to the ground so i was on super low food all the way and i struggled to make weight for our regional so all that time you know i've been hungry and hungry but in in retrospect like that's not the way to do it like you should really be ready you should be ready like you were for the regional you appealed you know yeah, saying it, i mean it's not always that straightforward sometimes you have to do no. it. like because yeah, it's, like, yeah. it's not that straightforward sometimes you no graft right until the day of the show yeah sometimes you do yeah but 
but you know, in the perfect fucking world. <laughs> yeah, you'll be yeah. running eight hundred grams of carbs every other day and still dropping weight. <laughs> that's, yeah, that that's like that's like an ideal, but that's probably. But then again, you you've probably set yourself up way back. You know, you've you've probably had a really productive off season yeah. and you've allowed yourself to, you know, have that time frame. Whereas I think this is another problem that the people are rushing into preps. People are rushing into preps. They're starting the, their off seasons way high body fat. So by the time they get down to you know the, the grit of it, they are on stupidly low carbs, stupidly low food. Whereas yeah. if you manage your and then this comes to the point where if you manage your post show, you can have a good off season. It's a full circle. <laughs> it's cycle, a full yeah. Circle. If you manage, if everything's fucking managed and you just stay on top of stuff, bodybuilding can be a lot easier for you. But yeah. it's when it's when things these variables are kept on top of. Uh, yeah. That's when yeah. it makes stuff hard, not even just for you, for your coach as well, trying coach. to keep up yeah. Yeah. And and, manage, and manage response. And this is what we were saying. I think this was one of the topics that we had, like managing it post-show and the, the dangers of post-show. It's like, it, it's not just like the initial sort of, um, you know, putting on all that weight. It's like, that's going to cause things down the line. It's going to mean you're going to have a less productive off-season because you're probably going to let, like the scenario is say like people in their off-season, uh, when they finish the show, they're like, oh, I'm going to do this rebound now. You know, I'm going to do this big rebound. So they increase the anabolics. They increase their food. They'll do that for what? Eight weeks? They'll yeah, make... I was, I was about to say that. I was just about to yeah. ask you that question. What's your thoughts on in terms of like keeping drugs in and stuff for show? Oh. Because me, yeah, I right. pull it straight out. I pull it straight out. Back to TRT. Yeah. Because yeah. my thought is you're, you're naturally going to have... Uh, you're going to have a good appetite for one. You're going to want to eat... Yeah. You have a, a boost of responsiveness from just being so lean. Your body's going to be really yeah. responsive. Yeah. So you can, you don't need, it's like over maximizing. You don't need it. Like you don't, yeah. need it. you're still yeah. going to get such risk, like such a good response post show. And then eight weeks down the line, once your appetite post show starts dropping and yeah. responsiveness starts dropping, then you implement yeah. back in and you yeah. just carry it on in a high. So instead of, going like this post show, then having mm -hmm. to go down into your cruise TRT phase, health phase, yeah. you're literally just carrying on the post show. On, the progress. Then you input the drugs in and then you're just yeah. going to go like go that. Up. Bro, uh, see, that is like a seamless, is that's a seamless transition from, from prep to off season. That's how you should logically do it. But like you say, bro, I've been, I don't know about you, Dudley, but I've, I've been here before. I've done the post show rebound. Like I've done that. I've been there and done that. And it doesn't, like you said, so you're 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 finishing prep. You're already probably quite battered from the drugs that you were taking, and then you're going to either increase the drugs or carry on taking drugs. You do see crazy progress for like what eight weeks, but then but then like I say there comes a time where you're drop. You're depressed. You're, you're depressed. depressed. Look, yeah, you're depressed. You, you go soft. You're going to be flat and soft. You're going to look the worst you have. So you're going to be mentally a bit affected by that, you know, because you go from being full as a house and loads of pumps and progress is mad. To dropping off, you're on TRT now. You're soft. You, it's just whereas you like, eight, eight weeks where you or whatever where you just you just, you've just got to wait essentially. Yeah. Because like if you do that eight weeks immediately post show, it doesn't feel like you're waiting. No. It, past two weeks has gone like that for me. That's what I mean, bro. But so fast. Like you said, you're you're now going to set yourself up. Whereas when those eight weeks have cleared, you can you can potentially increase the anabolics, and you're you're already going to make progress from post show till then anyway. Like you said, from the food, yeah, from the yeah. food, from feeling better, generally more energy, you're going to make progress. You're probably going to make just as much progress if you if you'd have added like 300, 400 primo. You know, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, bro, I'm I'm with you 100 percent on that. Just drop the drugs, drop all the fatigue, get yourself in a healthy place. Because when when you're healthy, your body's going to respond better anyway. Yeah. When you're in a healthy position, your body's going to respond. So, yeah, I, I agree with you, man. I'm I'm fully on that now. It's just in terms of like tapering up carbs per show i'm what two weeks per show now i'm on 450 grams of carbs training day 350 grams of carbs rest day i want to move shit up fast yeah that's why we have a coach to tell us no even if i had a client i'd be telling them no but you know when it's yourself yeah when it's just yeah when it's yourself you're you, emotional like, yeah, yeah. I'll fuck it. But if one of my clients yeah. I'd be keeping them in check, but when yeah. it's yourself, I'm just like, I just want to push food. I just, just want to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but that's why every coach has a coach, and because exactly, man, we need and someone to keep us in check. That's it, bro. But, that's yeah, I've, I've not pushed up carbs. I've not pushed up food too much. I'm still pretty much shredded. My glutes are still in. I've still got yeah, like, the shark girls in my like the 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 ham. The yeah, you still things. 
yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still it's holding still, up our lines. Yeah, um, yeah. So what, what, how would you move up food, do you reckon? I think like what you just said, like if you're looking at it from a personal point of view, you're like, yeah, I just want to get eating more now. and Because obviously you do have some some hunger signaling as well, like depending on obviously how you, pre- like you may not have, may not have, because you'd like say you were on higher food towards the end anyway. But like personally me, bro, like my hunger signaling is crazy and I want to eat more, but I'm keeping it sort of, it's not like, I think I'm on about 320 now on my training days. Um, I think the, the thing is to not go too crazy to where if you're feeling hungry, that doesn't mean that you need more food. You know what I mean? At this point. Um, so it's like gauge it from like how you're feeling, but I would definitely say you do need a certain degree of increase. Don't you? Um, first like week, two weeks, you do need an increase, but it's yeah. like how far you increase it. I guess just, I think it's just something to take week, week by week, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it all depends, like you said, on like how low you are, the your lowest low, your baseline. Yeah. So, what I did post show, I just said, right, I'm going back to baseline. Basically. My baseline was 150 grams of carbs. Yeah. So I, I went back to baseline, but I kept it with snacking. So that was immediately yeah. post show. That's Monday. Yeah. So let's say from Monday, we went, that was immediately post show. I did baseline plus literally anything that I wanted. And that's yeah. not me overindulging. That's me eating no. my baseline six meals at 150 grams of carbs. But if I want a bag of Harry Bowls, if I want this chocolate bar, if I want these yeah. cookies, then I'll eat it and I'll eat it around that baseline food. Yeah, the second day, um, which Tuesday, I then just kind of tapered down the snacking a little bit. So I had the baseline, 150 grams of carbs, but I tapered down that grabbing and eating. I just thought yeah, about yeah. it more. Yeah, yeah. Do I actually need to grab and eat that? No. Whereas on the first day, it was like, yes, okay, I'm just going to enjoy these. Yeah, 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 enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then coming into the third day, what did what did what did I do again? Tapered down the snacking, and I think we upped the baseline a bit. Then so we tapered down the snack snacking and upped the baseline a touch. Yeah. Um, well, not a touch. I think we we pushed it up not to what it is now. So maybe around three. yeah, a bit. Oh, yeah. And then so that was three days post show. Then four days post show, which was the Thursday. I then fully removed all snacking and just yeah. stuck to that 300. So you see how we've tapered down the snacking, but brought up the baseline. Mm-hmm. So that kind of, that baseline will fill the gap rather yeah. than this shitty food here. So the snacking's yeah. come down to the point where four days per show, snacking's been totally done with, and now I'm just running a baseline of what, like 300 grams of carbs. Yeah. And then from there, it's like, just, just get back increase. on diet plan. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's, going is that, that, that's it really. And, and bro, that's, two cheat meals since, two off plan meals. And, and that's all. That's, that's like a perfect, you've kind of like, per, you've got the perfect mix of like, getting your food back up, also enjoying a few bits here and there, you know, but you're staying on plan and you've not allowed yourself to overindulge. Do you think that's, that's perfect, man. Like that's a perfect sort of reversal out. And now you're ready to progress from here, you know, with food. And you've had a little bit of things here and there that you wanted. I think, honestly, bro, I think that's the perfect way to do it. I've pretty much been the same, but like, I just kind of instinctively ate for the first week, but it was like all just kind of foods that were on my plan anyway, but just a little bit more, more of it. And then like now I'm like, you know, you know, you did have little snacks here and there, like you say, but now it's kind of like I'm back on plan fully. I don't really want, I don't have the need or desire for snacks. I just want to stay on my plan now. You know, I'm satisfied with all my meals and, you just go from there, really. But, but how yeah, long that, did that take you to, to, to cut out snacking? I'd say about a week. It's been about a week for me. Oh, but when right. I say snacking, sometimes I mean like I would literally like pick a few tomatoes and yeah, like, I was about to say that. Yeah, like a great, bit of fruit. fruit yeah, yeah, like that. yeah. That's a big thing as well. Like utilizing fruits in between meals. I remember I messaged Max, so I competed, you know, Max, who was, co- who was coached by my coach, who I stayed yeah, in yeah. Alicante, and he was like, I'm struggling just between the meals because I just want to eat some of my bread. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, fruit, like get an apple, just, yeah, just fruit rather than anything else, bro. That's that's the one thing if I can say to people like as a tip, if you are hungry between meals post show because you will be, it's like a void, isn't it? Yeah, just grab an apple, grab a banana, grab grab some grapes, like you say. Um, grapes are really that, good because grapes are small and the snack. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, you can just pick just, a few. It's, sometimes it's not even it's it's not even the food itself that you want. You just no. want. Yeah, you just want. I just yeah. want to pick and eat. So, so that's why like grapes are really good. Yeah, and like even like um like really high like eighty five percent ninety percent dark chocolate. Sometimes you know just have a have a square of that. That will satisfy. If you're feeling like you want some chocolate, honestly, it will it will satisfy you. Especially if your taste buds are still there. So 
yeah man i think that's important it's just little tricks that you learn isn't it to sort of keep on yeah. top of it and that stops you from going overboard and what we're saying dudley as well try to minimize the amount of stuff you have in the house try to minimize the if you're if you know like you've got self-control but so if someone else hasn't got that and they know that there's like yeah if someone knows that they've got like a cookie in the freezer they're gonna go and eat it because it's there you know, if they've got biscuits in the, you know, pantry or whatever, they're going to go and eat it. But if it's not there, they're not going to go and go to the shop specifically to go and get that. You yeah, know, yeah, hundred percent. People do these B and M shops and just go to B and M. Yeah, they'll yeah. Stack, they'll stack up for weeks before the show. Yeah. And you've got by the time you get to the show, you've got a big bag of chocolate that you got to get through yeah. or whatever. And it's That's like, what I mean. It's just yeah. so easy picking. It's just easy. Yeah, picking. literally, it's easy. Yes, yeah, but if you don't, if you have a fridge full of like fruit and you know veggies and stuff like that you're just gonna carry on eating as you are you know that's why i said get back in that own environment i was back in yeah. my kitchen there was no excuse for me to go off plan i just did no. my morning i literally just got back did my normal walk up to morrison yeah. got some turkey rashes and some eggs that i didn't have in and and, and that's it i'm, I'm back. next day i'm back to normal yeah that's literally routine, it, bro, literally. That's routine. but that leads us on to talking about routine mm-hmm. because as soon as your routine's messed up that can mess up everything. So yeah. it's yeah. about getting back on routine. Don't, if you was doing a fasted walk every single morning, I'm not saying go in and do fasted stairmaster still, but if you right. was doing a walk around the block every single morning, get up and do that walk around the block yeah. every single morning. Right. Is for sure, I'm still up at five o'clock every single morning doing the fasted walk around. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know as well, Dudley, I feel like if you keep in, like if you were doing the walk in the morning or something, even just keeping that one thing in, it's going to set you up for the rest of the day. It's going to set your mindset set up for the rest of the day. You're thinking, I've got the first task done, so I'm just going to continue with this. You know, if you skip on that, like say that's the first thing, you'll head towards like getting out of routine. If you skip on that one thing, you know, that you were doing every morning. For even in Poland, like the day after the show in Poland, I was up at five o'clock, went for my walk, you know, got back had my eggs that I always do in the morning. You know, nothing changes. Mm. If you keep that, if you can keep that, bro, that's like setting you up for a good, you know, a good reversal out of your prep, what, you know. What about introducing new foods per show? Would you just keep it same foods? Because obviously you're kind of exposing your yeah. taste buds to to new stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a fucking chef, mate. Yeah. I've been chefing up everything, but obviously you can tell I've got a lot of self-control. Yeah to other people so would you just say for certain people just keep it exactly the same and don't put in any new foods for a few days and then i think like that that depends on the individual like say how well uh disciplined they are because to be fair bro like like me personally i like to include different sources so i'd I'd include different sources of protein i was having fish that i didn't have on prep i'd have a steak because i didn't eat steak i didn't eat any beef or anything like that like i think it's more so about just enjoying different tastes and textures Mm. but keeping it relative to what you probably would have been allowed to have in your diet, but you didn't, do you know yeah. what I mean? Or something like, even like, right. you go to the shop then you go to the shop for show. You said day after the show, you're going into Aldi, Tesco, Morrison's, yeah. whatever. Yeah. What, what are you picking up? So like, even, well, I'll use an example of what I did in Poland, man. So we went to the Polish shops and I was getting like, I was getting, I got like a pack of ham, like a pack of ham. <laughs> Cause like, it's not something that I would eat on prep. But it's something that I wanted. And yeah. let's face it, it was like 20 grams of protein and one gram of fat, the whole thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, and then I was like picking maybe like little things that I wouldn't like, um, different types of fish, like that I hadn't had. Um, I was having like gluten free bread, you know, like just random things that I didn't really have on prep. It's not exactly anything that's going to detriment, you know, it's not going to make me feel crap when I eat it, you know, not like picking up a pizza or a bag of cookies or something, you know. It's just like things that I kind of not say missed on prep, but, you know, didn't have on prep. And like you said, you, you just want to explore different tastes and textures, you know, and that's enjoyable. I think there's kind of like two different sections to it because both of these things, what I'm about to say is like, oh, I can eat whatever I want now. Yeah. But you've yeah. got two sides of that. You've got, okay, I'm going to get a frozen pizza. I'm going to get chicken nuggets. I'm going to, because yeah. I'm not being allowed that. I'm going to get it. <laughs> but then me, I'm like, I'm going to have tofu. I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah. Have- beef i'm gonna have a steak i'm gonna do that yeah. so both of them are shit that you've not been allowed to have yeah which well, side are you gonna go to you're gonna to go to the side i've not been allowed to have cookies i've not been allowed to yeah. have like, <laughs> pizza and this and then just grab all of that or you're gonna think smart about it and think 
there's so much stuff that I've not been allowed to have that's gonna that I'm gonna feel satisfied with that is actually just gonna give exactly, me bro. exactly carbs and yeah. fats and all that kind of good stuff that we look for. Exactly, bro. And even like stuff like fruits, like I picked up a watermelon and some pineapple, you know, and that was so enjoyable. It was so enjoyable. Like it was just it was probably better than if I'd have gone for like some sweets or something, you know. You just get some you know. like get some dark chocolate, get some strawberries. Oh. Yeah, like put it on the on your strawberries. Like, yeah. why do you have to get a milk yeah. bar and exactly, bro? Ex all milk bar, melt that, and then put that over shit. Like, it's it's excessive for no fucking it's, reason. Bro, this is the thing. This is this is this is exactly like the points we're trying to make. It's like you don't have to reach for that milk bar, man. You can have some dark chocolate on some oats with some banana, peanut butter, and that would taste just. As You've good. been fucking loving that. You would do anything <laughs> that a week ago. Yeah, just think in your head. Yeah. A Ago, you would do yeah. anything for that bowl of oats. Bro, literally. Literally, yo. If your coach says, right, if you do 10 backflips outside right now, you're yeah. going to be allowed 200 grams of oats. You would yeah. go on YouTube yeah, and type in how to backflip. <laughs> <Literally. laughs> you'd be yeah. fucking doing, you'd be exactly. doing backflips outside and you would learn how to backflip <laughs> within a day. You would literally, learn how to backflip within about an hour. And then yeah. you'd go to your coach and be doing 10 backflips and you'd be like, yo, where's my oats? Yeah, where's my oats? <laughs> <laughs> so like, that's that how... That's how you think about the, the bowl of oats then. So, like, bring that into now and just have the bowl of oats. Because exactly, man. Exactly. And you're going to feel so, so much less, like, so much less worse as well for eating that bowl of oats, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel, I, yeah. I did that on an, on an evening. So, there's loads of healthy recipes and stuff that you come across. Yeah. On Instagram, and I think this is, this is something that's really important. You can make ice cream out of skier yogurt. You can make brownies yeah. out of oats and a banana yeah. and yeah. cocoa. Thank you. And it, it will satisfy you. That's why I, I made a big brownie. Like I baked a big brownie and it was oats and it was banana and it was almond milk and cocoa powder and then yeah. a little bit of baking powder. Smashed that in the oven. Came out like a brownie. Um, I mixed 20 gram of whey with skier yogurt. Put that in the freezer for about an hour. Once you take it out of the freezer, you put a little bit of almond milk in to make it a little bit more like, yeah. okay, keep mixing it, mixing it. It, it. it turns like ice cream. And then okay. I'm sat there eating brownies and ice cream yeah but from bananas oats, and yeah the yeah stuff that we uh, eat. so how, how, how satisfied do you feel from that you feel completely satisfied you know like you say yeah, it's completely satisfied and it, it, i could have just i've got microwaves in I mean, microwaves i've got brownies in the freezer i could have yeah. just got a brownie out of the freezer put it in the microwave and i've got caramel ice cream as well i could have yeah. put the caramel ice cream on yeah. but the difference between those two meals a massive, but the, the, in terms of satisfaction, what I get from them, they're, they're probably the same. Yeah, yeah. I get the same satisfaction from... Literally, yeah. The, the Especially... Yeah. It, it's, I think, Dudley, if people had more access to this, maybe if they had more access to things that they could eat, that they would find just as, you know, appealing as these brownies and stuff, maybe they would think twice about reaching for that, you know. Yeah. Um, some learning sort of how like, to cook, learning how to yeah. cook is a big thing. If you know how to cook, you know how to manage this well. Yeah. You can think of alternatives. Um, you can you can bake, like I said, the, the oat brownies and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, and that's by you, yourself. Sometimes you're you know you're at a point in prep where like even I don't know for me like asparagus grilled with some salt on it tastes delicious. <laughs> you know. <laughs> But like, if you can keep that going, then you know when you include these other foods, like what you just said, that that's going to taste amazing. You know, you don't even have the desire to go for a cookie yeah. or a brownie. You know, yeah. I think keeping the taste buds like acclimatized to that sort of prep, you know, um, setting where everything tastes good, you can taste the flavors of everything. Because mm. you know, like say, like if you're in an off season, I know if you if I've ever done an off season, I've included quite like bad foods in it if i ate a cherry tomato or uh, a kiwi i'd be like oh this this is sad this is horrible mm. yeah but now if i eat a cherry tomato or a kiwi it tastes so nice and sweet and vibrant and you can actually enjoy the taste and appreciate the taste and if yeah. you can keep that going you're never going to really crave anything bad anyway um, you know yeah but uh, what the... about um monitoring progress in terms of check-ins and stuff what would you look for from an athlete in, that would tell you that you're going in the right direction in terms of body composition post show would you be looking for increased fullness obviously i think that's something that we'd be looking for increased fullness but not 
too watery. We want to still see lines. We know if we're getting too yeah. watery, we're probably yeah. overdoing it a little bit and we need to pull yeah. back. We don't yeah. want to put on too much weight, maybe within 10 pounds of stage weight within the first yeah. couple of weeks, you reckon? Yeah, I think 10 pounds is about... How, how much are you over your stage weight at the moment, Dudley? Oh, God, my lowest. I'm... I was super low though. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah you're, you're a bit of an exception. I was 181, I think, at my lowest. I, bear in mind, I didn't even think I was going to make 190. Yeah, man. Ended yeah, up weighing yeah, in yeah. the morning of the show like 180. Like, I don't know what the fuck happened, but that's why I was eating 800 grams of carbs a day. Yeah. Dropping yeah. Weight, and it was just yeah. like, it kept coming and it kept coming. Was that Spain look my best look? Could we have got it better? Could we have got it fresher? Was I ready too early? That was even a question that's thrown out. Like, was I ready too early? Um, but obviously, it's bodybuilding, isn't it? I forgot what yeah. I was saying now. What What was the topic of that? What were I just talking about? Your, your body weight, you say you're 180, and then what's your body oh, weight? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, but my body weight now, this morning, was 200 pounds, and that's post, post an off-pan meal. So, well, do you know what your actual stage weight was? Was it 180 on stage? Actual, <laughs> I had to shit out 0.7 kg, didn't I? <laughs> so, <laughs> The height thing, obviously, when we did the regionals, it was fine. I weighed in fully clothed. I yeah, yeah, no problem. It was absolutely yeah. fine. And then we go to Spain and this try telling me I'm 170 centimetres or something like oh, five. Really? And I'm like, yo, I'm not five foot six. And yeah, she, like, the thing same. And I'm like, I'm, I swear to God, yeah, I did a show two weeks ago. My cap was 100 yeah. pounds and I weighed in with all my clothes on. Um, yeah. So she's telling me I have to be 187, 187 pounds. But I've had six... 178. Grams of carbs already that day. Yeah. Because I'm thinking I'm 180 this morning and I've got 10 pounds or my cap. There's no chance I'm going to reach that, yeah. that carbon up now. So we started carbon up thinking we had massive room. So when I actually weighed in, I was 108, 100 and... 187.7 and then yeah. 187 for the yeah. height that they put me in. So I was like, fuck. So I run off to the toilet. I'm there. I sat <laughs> on the toilet. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so like hey, this is the hardest I've ever worked in my life. This is probably harder than I've even posed on stage. Like <laughs> wet dripping down my face. And bear in mind, this athlete toilet in the back, it didn't have a lock on it. <laughs> but it didn't have a lock. So I'm <laughs> so, so I tell Hader, I'm like, Hader. Come here, come here. I said, bro, just stand outside the door and guard it. He says, I'm not doing that. I said, bro, I need to shit out this 0.7 kg and there's no lock on the door. Like, just stand outside it. He's like, I'm not doing that. So I'm like, fuck. What if someone walks in while I shit? He's like, oh, you're an adult. It's all right. I'm like, what do you mean? I, just because I'm an adult doesn't mean that I don't, I want for someone to <laughs> walk in while I'm trying to sh sh like, like spread it, spread it out. <laughs> literally, my legs are up like this. And I'm like, <laughs> like that. So I'm trying to, so I'm putting my legs up like this, yeah? And yeah. then I'm holding the door as well, because the door was pretty close. You could hold it. So I've got my legs up. I'm holding the door to make sure no one comes in. I'm oh. squeezing. My T-shirt is dripping. I'm like, <laughs> my whole face is just dripping. I was in there about 30 minutes. And then I finally got to that one big one that came out. Yeah. And I was like, right, that's the one that's going to make me. Like, I was waiting for that <laughs> one to come out. I was like, yes, that's big enough to drop the weight. Oh God, this is a disgusting conversation. But this is fucking bodybuilding, man. It's bodybuilding, bro. Yeah, this is... So then I sprint. I'm running. Yeah, I, I've got I my head, a header. So header comes. We run back to the woman. And I'm like, yo, girl, like, just quick, let me on. She, we weigh in and I weigh bang on 187 pounds. And then I run out and jump on header like that. And I grab him and he's like, get the fuck off me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I just yeah, mate, me. that's satisfaction when you've made weight, especially when you're, you know, you've been grafting all that time. Then you have to graft that shit out. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was the biggest graft that was harder than 45, 45 you, um, there, Did they say. make you weigh in like in your pants? Did they make you take all your clothes off? Um, I think I weighed in, in my weight. pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. obviously the clothes make a big difference. Yeah, but... I was thinking about, Hader was telling me to take off my boxers, so that would have been yeah. the next step. Like, Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. If, you, if that shit was like 0. 0.1... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I would have taken off the boxers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, man, that's the story, though. That's classic, isn't it, though? Classic physique, man, with the caps. Yeah. It's just ridiculous sometimes, isn't it? But, yeah, there's so much no. to talk about there. There's so much we could talk about. On other oh, bro, we could, we could have a whole podcast on classic physique, like, you know... That's another story. That's another, maybe that's another whole one. Story, a whole other story. Yeah, it's almost been an hour now, so we should probably... Oh, start. bro. 
I, anyway, I feel like we haven't even got through some of the points that we would I feel like we've just, so much point. So yeah. you guys watching, yeah, we've got full like breakdown here of like the topics, and I feel like we've still got so much more to talk about. We've got loads, but I feel like let's just transition away from there and let's just quickly talk about the potential psychological effects of, of post competition reverse dieting, because that's obviously a massive thing and something that I like to focus on massively within my coaching is mentality. Um yeah. so how how much better I felt this time round from doing what I did compared yeah. to what I felt like before was insane. I'm the next day I was just bouncing about two days post show, I'm bouncing about three days post show, I'm bouncing about and I'm just feeling good. Whereas before I felt so sluggish, like you said, with the ankle swelling up, yeah. the water weight, just feeling like shit. Um, yeah, like that has a massive psychological effect on you. Like if you smash food. Yeah, hugely. And that's the thing people don't, I always feel like people don't understand that until afterwards. They will go for the food first and then they'll they'll obviously realise afterwards. Whereas if you have hindsight beforehand thinking, if I eat this, I'm, I know I'm going to feel terrible for the next few days. If you have that sort of thinking beforehand, you're not going to fall into that sort of trap afterwards where, like you say, and it can be up to a week. You feel terrible. You know, when you gain that water weight, you just feel so horrible and sluggish. You feel terrible. Um, but like like you said, Dudley, if you just kind of man, if you can just manage those few days per sh post show, you're going to feel so much better. You're going to feel like you've got basically how you are on prep, but you've actually got energy. You know, you can actually function mentally you know you feel yeah, good you don't want to push you don't want to push yourself into the point of like having an eating disorder um, no yeah, yeah people love to to blame bodybuilding for eating disorders but i think it's it's not even bodybuilding it's just your own mismanagement and as it bad is. as that as bad as yeah. that sounds like blaming it on you there was a tattoo that i got immediately for sure as soon as i got yeah. back to england two days i got i am the architect of my own destruction and I really like that, that yeah. that's massively helped me mentally yeah. for yeah. sure yeah. because I'm waking up and I'm seeing it every single day I'm like I am the architect you of are. my own destruction yeah. and it's my choice to to yeah. do everything, sure. everything is literally my choice but people yeah. love to say oh it's because of this it's because of that it's because of this you yeah. you've not got an yeah. eating disorder because of bodybuilding you've got an eating disorder because of your own mismanagement probably yeah. you allow yeah don't, don't demonize bodybuilding it's your own mental state there and that you need to work on personally yeah and i guess that's like that's probably one of the reasons of this whole podcast isn't it why we got together to do this because it's like making people aware of this it's like you probably don't have an eating this you wouldn't have had an eating disorder it's like I say it's just your own mismanagement that's caused you to, to go down this route you yeah. know but i think it's important to get that out there and to sort of help people maybe on because i think post show can be harder than prep in some respects yeah, yeah, some, yeah post show can be harder than prep because you know, their appetite's all over the place. They're mentally all over the place. They don't, they don't have a set goal to work towards. Some people don't, you know. So it's, um, there's a lot of like, and there's all people saying, this is how you should do it. This is how you shouldn't do it. You know, and we're not saying, we're not saying this is how you should do it. You can do whatever, whatever you want. But just know what you're going to do is going to have consequences if you decide yeah, to go there's off. There's going to be people watching this and they're going to be like, oh yeah, well, this well, person smashes loads of food. This person does this. I yeah. I want to be a normal human or whatever. I want yeah. to be a normal person for a few days. All right, you go and do that, but yeah, do I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I just want to tell you what I do, and I'm going to say it, man. well. Um, and I, I might throw in there as well. Like, if you do try it, you probably will be happier doing it this way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it'd be a dickhead if you want, but I promise you, I'll yeah, money on it. If you do it this way, you you'll. you'll you being a normal person for a couple of days exactly bro like this this is it man like i say i'm sure and people people almost get offended when you try to when you try to sort of talk about that don't you it's like yeah you don't have to do it that way like you say you're going to feel so much better down the line for just doing it the you know the controlled way and we still enjoyed our time man we still i still exactly. had I, I went out for a meal i went and I went went to york got a coffee sat yeah. on the grass, had a spliff um, yeah, man. Okay, but I ate it around my baseline, and yeah. I kept that. So yeah. it's not like I was just being full strict body. No. Like, it's not like you have to be. A, people are like, oh, they're, they're those boring guys that are like a robot as soon as they come off prep. No, you don't. You can still be normal. Robot. I still had a shit ton of food. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. still ate. I managed it, and I didn't throw up, and I didn't get. Yeah, you, I was like all over the place. 
you're not eating to the point where you literally like your stomach's out there and you can't even walk because you feel so sick. Like, you know, it's just. Let's touch on this as well, actually, real quick, yeah. because I had a message from a client this morning um, about. We'll, we'll go female specific here. I don't know if you coach females, but just hormones and stuff like that. Mm. Mm. Um, obviously we're not as, as, as affected as males we're not yeah. as affected as females obviously on the PD front of stuff we are when we but we've already spoke about that in terms of yeah. um, adding in drugs but females can expect to lose like the cycle yeah I had yeah. a message and, and it's just like I've not had I've, I've missed my cycle is that something normal to happen and I was just like yeah that's that's something that we can kind of expect to happen that does happen so just want to say that as well for you females out there when you do get to super low body fat levels and you do come out of a competition or a photo shoot or whatever you you might miss your cycle and now your focus as our focus as um, male bodybuilders was to take out all the drugs and then kind of do that your focus now should be to get healthy as possible so again if you are running drugs you're doing clean anavar whatever whatever then take that out and start focusing on your health get your cycle back and push your fats up higher remember females need more fat in their diet for their hormones to be able to to work properly and we shouldn't really be pulling fats too low in females i mean we have we have to do it maybe the last couple of weeks we might have to do it just to get in that condition yeah, yeah. but ideally we want to be putting in fats to a higher level um to, to just make sure that we're we're obviously giving yeah. your body what it, what it needs uh, so you can start feeling like a female again and having your, yeah. your cycle and stuff. Yeah, bro, that's, um, you basically summed it up there, like say the main function really for a female, especially should be to, to just come out of prep and get those, get the cycle back and, you know, get healthy again before even considering anything else. You know, I think that should be the first and foremost thing, you know, but females, especially, cause like you say, males, we can sort of manipulate it a little bit more, can't we? But, we yeah. might even need to push food up a little bit more in females, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. They, they, they need that support of the body fat as well, more than we... 100%, bro, yeah. Uh, for females, even even more, if you want to get back your body to 100%, you need to be even more meticulous than as males. And Yeah, yeah, I agree. This is coming from guys here, I understand, because I, I do my best to try and study as much as possible on the female side of stuff, because... I, I obviously don't know how it feels with guy stuff. Sometimes, yeah. like, I might not need to research these certain things no. because I understand how it feels. Yeah, you know. But for a female, we don't understand directly how it feels. No. No. Um, so I always try and do as much research as possible. So those guys have it easy, man. Female bodies are so confusing compared to <laughs> us. <laughs> they are complex, bro, like I say. And that's as well why you need to go, if you're competing as a woman with a coach, you need to go with someone that, knows their shit, you know, knows their stuff. You know what the crazy thing is, is female coaches don't even understand female no. bodies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I think I some of the coaches... To me and it's like, they put them on something, I'm like, yo, why the fuck is a female what? giving you this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind How of scary. Understanding it's like, hey, she's, she's a female, she should know that this isn't... How yeah, this is not... Female. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. I guess the whole other topic. We're we'll yeah, yeah. An hour into this podcast now. So what we're gonna do is we'll just wrap it up here, but there's definitely more we can bring. I, I feel like we missed like half the criteria. Like, <laughs> the full series we can talk about yeah, coaching, we can talk about like I don't even know, there's probably ten different topics we can Yeah, bro. Yeah. I, I feel like I feel like if we wanted to get all our points across, it would take hours, wouldn't it? It would literally take hours. So yeah, if, if if anyone wants more of these episodes, then just drop us a comment, drop us a message, and yeah. let us know that you've enjoyed sitting through and watching it. I know we've probably waffled a lot, and anything else we do in the future, hopefully we can try and get a little bit more concise into points. Yeah, and yeah. Like we might have been all over the place. I'll watch it back and try and add the um, the markers on YouTube so you can go and click through certain topics. But we might talk about one topic here and then talk about it again over here. It's a bit all over the place, but there's so much information that you can gather, gather from this. So I hope you've sat down and wrote with a pen or whatever and made your notes because it will be really beneficial for you to, to implement everything that we've said. Um. So yeah, anything else you want to kind of round up from the whole post-show phase? Um, I guess it's like, as in a in a summary, I'm trying to keep it short because I know we have got. On. It's like be more con like conscious of what you're doing. Think logically, not emotionally. You know, 
don't just reach for anything and everything. Try and stay as much on plan as possible when you get back. Keep your routine, keep your habits. It's the good habits that lead on to, you know, a productive off season. Um, but obviously, if you've got a coach, then they should really know what they're doing. They should manage you better, you know. But yeah, they're the main sort of take home points, I guess. Just don't eat like a twat, basically. <laughs> Right, I'm going to share my screen now because we're just going to run through a couple of of physiques. We're going to have a little bit of a, like a rate of physique. So there's a few people that sent in a few pictures. Um, obviously, I don't think we're going to be able to get through them all, but we'll get through a few and just kind of see what strengths and weaknesses and stuff are. So if I can figure out how to share the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So when I put the thing up on Instagram, Isaac clicked the button. I was like, Isaac, do you really want your physique rating? But I was like, brother, you're pro. Like, we ain't even pro, bro. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I'm always looking to improve and stuff like that. But obviously, that's the right mindset. So go and follow Isaac, yeah. IFBB pro, men's physique. All right, so we use this post. We'll look at this post. There's no back shot there, but we know Isaac's got a fucking shell of a back. It looks mad, yeah. Yeah, a thing that we say that needs improving. Um, So... Just over 13 weeks out, it won't be his pro debut. He did his pro debut on the day that he turned, well, the day after he turned pro at Arnold's last year. Um, this year, I guess he's looking to push for the Olympia. That's what I'm guessing because that's everyone's first goal. Yeah, 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 um, absolutely. To get to the Olympia. Yeah. Something that I have noticed from Isaac over the past few years is just conditioning. And obviously, that's yeah. not something that you can see in this. Form. No, you can't. Yeah, yeah. Getting that granite conditioning is something that he needs. Will his skin allow for it? Does he? We do, I, don't, I don't know. Um, because he has dieted hard, and I know he has grafted hard, shits on a cardio, but it's like sometimes your skin's just thick, especially with African yeah. guys. Yeah. You have like really thick skin. Yeah. Um, and it just, it, it doesn't allow you to get that white man conditioning, you know? Yeah, like, that graininess. Yeah. That, that graininess. And I think that's what would take his physique to the next level if he could figure yeah. out a way whether it's a combination, because remember, he's not he's not been using drugs for long, so whether it's a combination of, of certain drugs that allow him to, to get to that level, yeah. I think that's that's something that'll level him up. But in terms of muscularity, you look at his front shot here, what are you thinking? Like, if you know, in terms of, like, actual muscle, like his structure and his muscle belly, it's like he's just full, isn't he? He's just very dense and very full. I think not really missing... It. Yeah, not really missing anything here. Like, for a men's physique, you know, physique... Like delts are full, chest full, arms are full. Do you know what I mean? There's, mm. I think, like you said, judging off what you've said anyway, it's like if, if he can nail the condition with that sort of fullness, that that's just gonna look, that's gonna look mad. I think that's it. I, I, I think in terms of growth and stuff, he's he's, he's got very well balanced, so it's not yeah, just, he is. That's, that's pulling out. I mean, obviously, he's got an amazing back shot as well. If I can, yeah, find yeah, that. yeah. Um, but it's something for the 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 latter stages of prep to really yeah. look at see this is like and diet and it's everything's, like there. everything's there everything's there it's just like you say a matter of conditioning yeah and I guess like, as a pro that's gonna that's what's gonna separate you from being a top pro and you know yeah because all these pros have got muscle man <laughs> all of them yeah, yeah they're all big yeah they're all big they're all developed yeah like best on the day and I think yeah. if he's like yeah. his day, he manages whether it's a collaboration of new drugs and stuff new protocols that allow him to get yeah. that percent because it's not much more that he needs in terms of oh. that extra but i mean yeah like he's very complete like the back is just you know that's there's nothing more to add there really you know the thickness the shape it's they're very complete very very complete so yeah man go give isaac a follow like he said on his post he's look at, look at that back shot yeah man it's just <laughs> thick. He's, he's thick as fuck um, so yeah, like I said, 13 weeks out, go and follow his prep, Isaac Francis. It'll be his second pro show, I believe. So hopefully we can be seeing him on the Olympia stage soon. And like I said, no doubt without that extra con with, with that extra conditioning, he, he can take it to the next level. Yeah. So um, yeah, number two, we've got Joe Richardson. So he pressed the button as well. Oh my, like, my man Joe, my man Joe. Let's have a look because this guy he's fucking sick and he's turning pro this year, hopefully. Yeah, Joe's. Uh, we don't even have to click on these photos, man. You can just see from look at that, just just the thumbnail of that photo. It's like fucking yeah. wild. Um, this yeah, Joe's like Joe's. I competed with Joe in twenty twenty one at the Arnold's. Um, we both got second call out, um, but like the the level that he's like he's leveled up so much since then, man. Like it's crazy. He's really putting the graft. 
He's yeah. really good. I saw this photo the other day and I was like, rah, what the fuck? I think I commented on it and I, I, yeah, I shared it on my story even. And for me to share just a fucking normal of a guy on my story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got to be a wild shot. It's got to be some other book time. Mm-hmm. Like, fuck. You know, someone that's not pro in Olympia for me to share yeah. an amateur yeah. randomly. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I must have looked at it and been like, yeah, not... so yeah, yeah, I saw this and I was like, rah, like glutes. Uh, like, how many weeks out is it? I'm not sure actually. I think I don't actually know. Um, maybe like eight weeks or ten, eight, ten weeks or something That's like that. Very fucking good. Yeah. You can hold this fullness, bro. The the density as well that he's put on on his back and his arms is he's you know he's like I said he's completely leveled up from the guy that I competed against at the Arnold's in 2021. He's a different bodybuilder now. He really yeah. has. Do you know what he's done? Do you know what Joe did though? He took a proper off season. He took time off to actually improve. He well, didn't he just go. Like, I was gonna say Joe does shit proper. He's a bodybuilder. Yeah. He's a fucking bodybuilder. He didn't. He's he didn't. Not, he didn't piss around that. thinking I'm going to compete again soon. He just did the work that he needed to. He, and didn't, he, he didn't say, "Oh, I'm, I'm going to be a normal person." For, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm going to be a normal person for a few weeks. He, he normal. Just, <laughs> he does the work. He does the work, man. Like, what are his most recent checking shots? I think that that was four days ago. New low weight of eighty nine point four. So what's his 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 caps the same as mine? Is he my? He must be my height. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think he's about your. Oh no, 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 he's not my height. Taller. I think he's about my height. Yeah, he's taller because my height cap is eighty six in kg. I was just yeah, thinking, so that's the, yeah, it's like, pounds, but kg mine is eighty six kg. So yeah, taller than me. Um, eighty nine. I think it's eighty nine point three is the next one up. So yeah, over five. Is that your yeah. cap? Is he in yeah. Your yeah. New, uh, he says, but he says weight cap achieved. Yeah, so he's already he's already on the cap. So uh, it's so it's just a matter of refining it, but keeping that sort of fullness that he's got, keeping that you know that nice density that he's got. And that's where it comes in in terms of just managing it right. Like I said, maybe I came in a little bit too early. He just needs to manage it right and come in. Yeah, the that's it. Because it's like the look. The look is there. It's just like you say, managing it from here, you know, getting the the finer details that are going to show on stage. Hmm. So just trying to uh, find those, do, those extra lines, but not overdoing it, putting in not food, overdoing it. We like like a, like I was doing eight hundred grams of carbs. As soon as you reach that classic limit as a classic athlete, yeah, so much weight lift, lifted off your shoulders, bro. Literally, and it's it's more about refining the look, then, isn't it? Once you know you've made the cap, it's just about the look from there. You know? that look, putting in yeah. the cap, you can put in a little bit more food, yeah. And, up, you can come back down, you can fill up a yeah. little bit again, come back down, new lines might evolve, but in terms of anything that you feel like is missing, do you feel like he's missing out? Um, let me I go through the shot immediately, something that stands out to me is like, my adductors are tall, like, thick and they touch. Yeah. I'd like to yeah. see more thickness in the hamstrings. I feel like yeah. we're back there. Maybe, I guess um, all I can really say from that ratio as well, like what you just said, maybe a bit of glutes as well. Um yeah. Glutes. But again, glute detail can come in, you know, down the line, can't it? You might be able to get it in like two weeks out and it's, you know, there's lines and everything. But yeah, but nice, really nice. The front, the front shots, the front shots crazy. The front yeah, shots. Yeah, the, the, the shape is, yeah, the shape. So shape's sick, man. Trying to see if there's anything else that I've put in there. Good to see a, a vacuum on that one, Joe. Be good to see you pull a vacuum on that ab and thigh. That'd be quite cool. Yeah, yeah, because... Problem. Make that way smaller. And yeah. make, I think he can push those lats out a little bit more. And yeah. I think he can, he can make his arms look bigger. He can put his hands tighter behind his head right. to look at his biceps. And then, and then pulling a vacuum, yeah. pulling a vacuum while doing that would just make the waist look even smaller, make the quads look bigger. You know, yeah. that would pull it, finish it but off on nicely. A, on a pose like this, would you say biceps touch ear to close the gaps? Yeah, yeah, to close that gap. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Close gaps everywhere. You can close. Yeah. Because you think if, if Joe closed the gap there and then he did a vacuum, his legs would look bigger, his waist would look smaller and his upper body would look bigger and he's flaring his lats out more. He'd just have that complete illusion, you know. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Um, but yeah, density's come on so I'm, much. The only thing I'm seeing here is glutes, man, and I think... Yeah. But then he's he's like, what, 10 weeks, 8 weeks out? Still got weeks out. He's still yeah. got time, Considering I'm... where he's at now, that's uh, he's he's in a good spot. Maybe some more cap on the delts. Yeah, from what I... Yeah, I suppose, I guess. Have more delt, I think. Yeah. But in, if you look at how much Joe's improved, like he has he has put in the work and he has improved a hell of a lot. Like he has... Yeah, 
he's a solid, solid UK amateur. Yeah, definitely. Right on that leg. Yeah, man. But if that glute manages to come in, yeah, if that glute comes in and a little bit more on the hamstring, yeah, that's that's gonna be. Yeah. So no. that's Joe going forward, Joe. Obviously, I don't know how many weeks out he says he is. He says 19 weeks in. Who does that, Joe? You dickhead. No one says. <laughs> Everyone says out. Oh, it's fucking be it, man. <laughs> I hope he's not 19 weeks. Out, wait, out. wait, wait. Hashtag six out. He's six, six weeks okay, out. Yeah. Six weeks out. Yeah. So six weeks out. So go and follow him. Right. Let's move it on. Shout out to Joe. Shout out to Joe. Shout he's good luck. Joe. He's in moves tops for so long. <laughs> so let's wrap this up on some Instagram rate your physiques. If yours doesn't get done, don't worry about it. We will revisit it. So we've got Manuel here. He sent these for us. So one, two, is it three photos we've got? Yeah. So that's his back shot. That spread and then front shot here. What are you saying? Them quads are good. Yeah, quads are good. It's got a nice V taper. Um, good shape. Um, but I guess it's just it needs more. Yeah, I think I think through who the fuck has to balance the rupple with the legs? That's a good, yeah. <laughs> That's a good yeah. thing. You have to balance your rupple with your legs. Bro, you've got more the same problem I have. Yeah. <laughs> more chest, more delts. Yeah, just more oh. Yeah, more, more overall size on the upper body. And that, that's going to be a nice a nice balance there, 100%. Looking at the back shot, hamstrings can... But when you have such strong quads, it's like everything in, in the legs yeah. come up. So... Yeah. You make sure you're getting that hamstring work in in terms of back, I would just say thickness lats seem to be there yeah the thickness yeah it's, it's there like you say it's just it's just getting more of it and like you say hamstrings adductors glutes to make yeah. that all balance from the rear but yeah it's with, there with that quad sweep we can kind of see there as well because the, the quads look like they're coming out so thick again yeah. it just makes everything else look smaller yeah. so for you it's not balanced do you need to put as much volume in the quads, can you take a quad exercise out and replace it with another hamstring exercise? It's as simple as that. Um, or maybe even maybe even try and hit hamstrings on like on like a back day or something. Like include a bit of hamstrings into you know the programming on the back day, like to like hamstring curl or something. You know, just yeah. additional hamstring work. Definitely do with a density day. Looking at yeah. the day where it works yeah. hamstrings and maybe heavy pulls from the floor just to bring yeah. out yeah. Yeah. Kind of the erectors and the, and the hamstrings and the glutes could definitely do that separate to a quad day but then even on that quad day i feel like you'd still probably need minimal yeah quad yeah, so, yeah yeah like what like a hack squat and a leg extension and then the rest so, of yeah it. that's it um for hamstrings that's what i do for a period of like eight to 12 weeks and have a yeah man yeah because you don't to balance this physique out there's no more quads needed so yeah you can get away with minimal minimal quad work really um well, like Focus most of the leg leg training. If you're, if you're doing legs, maybe focus more on the hamstring, adductor, glute side of things and the erector side of things. And definitely be, that'll bring the shots up. So then next we're coming to Connor underscore 97. One, two, I think there's three photos here. Yeah, three photos here. So no leg shots. Are you a bodybuilder or are you men's physique, Brev? Because get them fucking legs out. Don't ever yeah. have them legs if you're going to call yourself a bodybuilder. <laughs> like a bodybuilder. He's got the size for it. Delts look really good. Um, yeah, not sure where he is in terms of like off season or whatever now, but delts are good, quads are good, so I don't know why you don't get your legs yeah, up. Quads, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why hide them, son? <laughs> but looking, looking at these shots from upper body, what do we need here? Back, yeah, yeah. So I think as soon as you scroll to that shot, you're like, just yeah, that's back. yeah. You know? Just like lats, just more lats, more sort of mid back, just more density there, isn't it? Just need more, a bit more density there. More back. That front shot looks good. Um, obviously, on poses like this, man, keep that stomach in, make that waist look tight. Um, maybe even bring that shoulder around a little bit more. Always maybe a bit more, maybe a bit more chest as well. Development in the chest and the upper chest, just to match those delts, because those delts are, are big. Yeah. You know, big yeah. round delts. Yeah. 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 Um, like that chest, if a bit more density in that chest would just kind of complete that front shot. Do you know what I mean? It just looks a bit like not not um, underdeveloped compared to the arms and the delts, but because they're so big and overpowering, kind of makes the chest look a bit shallow. But not to say that you know. You want to be weird. focusing on like building the top line here, so yeah. this the, the top part. How can I? Yeah. I can see it, but 
full top line of the of the chest but you need to be careful when you're trying to develop that if you're doing a high incline smith press because your delts are so big we don't want your delts to take over so you need to be very very direct with movement and i think when you're programming make sure you're programming tempo markers and stuff like that that's really going to help develop this whole top line of the chest but what the tempo markers are going to do is help you steer away from getting these front delts bigger for no reason and just really focusing on bringing that top line of the chest so whether that's a high incline smith press or find an exercise where you can remove the front delt from that from that press and just try and bring this area up here so that you can just be thick along this whole top line Absolutely. yeah yeah i agree with that bro it's like strengths definitely delts and arms um things to bring up just re from po posterior development really and uh, a little bit of chest but overall like you know solid physique pausing as well we can work on that 100 percent, man <laughs> and get those fucking legs out man you're a bodybuilder yeah <laughs> bodybuilder get the they get pausing those legs every single time you're taking pictures you, you've got to be flexing those legs yeah man uh, so next up here this looks like a really great physique ethan rawlinson do you know this guy yeah, I know Ethan. Yeah, I know Ethan. Yeah, yeah, he has. He's he's solid, man. He's. Um, I think he compete. I can't remember. He did a few shows this year. Um, Is that? Yeah, from, must be from that show. Yeah, man. He, he's solid. He's solid. He's got that kind of dense look. You know that that density. Um, that back shot's good, but the the only thing that's really standing out to me on scrolling through these is chest shots. Yeah. Chest yeah. Looks very. Yeah. Yeah, it could be more in the chest. Oh yeah, definitely. If we're talking like making improvements, yeah, because the delts and the arms, you know, they're they're there, you know, they're great. But like I say, chest, hundred percent. Is anything to sort of yeah. maybe hamstrings as well. Hamstrings, yeah. So, chest, hamstrings, quads are really good. Quads are great, yeah. Just good, good shape and development all round. It's I guess with a physique like Ethan's, it's just refining, isn't it? And just a refining the look and adding onto where he needs to, which is yeah, chest and hamstrings would. Would be, I think chest and hamstrings would really, really complete his physique, actually. Yeah, get a little bit more of a drop there as well. Yeah, little, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a really good fucking look. Solid. That's all we have to say here, to be fair. Yeah. Really good look. It's just something that needs refining. You can get that by just, I, th I think, chest. I'd love to just see more of a pop on that chest. Um, and that that transform this whole look. And then that little bit more of hamstrings and you can obviously yeah. get condition so you know how to graft yeah. so you might need to be a question here that because that back shot looks mad condition is yeah condition is sick let's move it on from here next up right safe lifts looks like a younger guy yeah more at the beginning of his journey so it's a little bit different to what we've looked at um in terms of going from here obviously we just need a more overall mass um but is there anything specific that you say is good on his physique in terms of like where he is at this moment in time? I think like like the the the, the chest is pretty you know his chest is quite good. Um, the, you know some good quad development there as well. Um, but like 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 Dudley said, it's just a matter of overall mass because once you get some more overall mass, then you can really see your weak points. You know, mm. but right now it's just a case of quads are decent. Yeah, quads some nice shape in the quads and um, the arms. The posing isn't bad either. To be fair, posing is not too bad, but obviously. Can make some improvements there with the back shot and stuff. But yeah, definitely. Maybe work on on the posterior side of things, the hamstrings. Hamstrings, yeah, we can see that already, especially when you're this early on developing quads, like you are developing. Like, look, you've got to think now. You've got to catch yourself early. You don't want to be one of those motherfuckers that it, that just gets imbalanced. Yeah, you want to sort yeah. that out early, and you're early enough in your bodybuilding journey now that you can attack these from early. You can identify and attack these from early. Yeah. So yeah. Get worse. So on that posterior, um, put in a density day if you need to, um, and just get, yeah, thickness, get those adductors touching, work on hamstrings, just yeah, to keep up with the quads, because they seem to be developing really well. Yeah. That upper body as well, it's just just keep going, like say, some more density, get some more width in the lats as well. Um, just keep going, basically, just keep going. It's kind of like not a case of what it, can I work on, it's just yeah, keep it's so going. so hard with like guys so early in the journey, because it literally, it's just like, don't worry about yeah. your thing. Just yeah. eat food and grow. Exactly, and bro. Worry about all the mini school things later. later. Like say, <laughs> say if we're looking at say this is complete opposite to Ethan, who we we're just looking at, who is a competitive, developed bodybuilder, and we can actually nitpick at things that need to work on. Whereas uh, this guy here, 
it's like just just keep going just keep grafting keep working keep putting on muscle and then you can identify really where you need to to work on so yeah but definitely some more hamstring would be to match the quad development 100 percent. we're gonna wrap it up there guys it's gone on long enough we didn't expect it to go on this long my laptop actually ended up dying um so we will be back with more videos like this if you want to see more podcasts from me or even featuring sam as well drop it in the comments drop a like subscribe i've really enjoyed this and i think sam did too um it's definitely something we will do in the future more of like i said if you guys like it so just let us know that you like it because then we'll do more subscribe thank you for watching i love you all